Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, talking to you about the events of December 2019. So, first thing I want to talk about is the planet Jupiter, and Jupiter has a 12-year orbit, and it goes through a sign, you know, for about a year. So, Jupiter just went into Capricorn, like yesterday, today is the 4th, I'm doing this, but so on the 3rd it went into Capricorn, and Jupiter will stay in that sign for basically 12 months. So Jupiter is a planet of abundance, of um, life perceptions, when there's a lot of stuff going on that is difficult and kind of like, you know, why is this going on? Jupiter kind of shows the method in the madness or allows you to have faith about why something happened or create a sense of meaning around what happened and being able to um, incorporate it into your life. So it's like healing the wound by making sense of things, you know? So I know this is going to be happening next month in January, but I just want to address the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that's going to happen in Capricorn um, that a lot of people write about in astrology and like, oh my God, it's going to be terrible or it's going to be whatever. Um, so Pluto has, you know, a 280-year orbit, let's say a 300-year orbit, and Saturn is roughly a 30-year orbit. So Saturn will conjunct Pluto you know, once every 30 something years. And um, so the last time we had this conjunction, it was around 1982. So if you happen to have been, you know, alive and you're know, not like you're, well, even if you're like two years old when that happened, you could kind of think about what happened in your life and um, if your parents got divorced or, you know, whatever, if you're little or, um, say you're you know 20 when that in 1982 or so it's like what belief systems because Saturn Pluto can be some sorts of trauma or um, big events and Saturn sort of locks you in so Saturn's like this is how it is you know and it can create um, a sort of stuck spot in your beliefs and so with Saturn and Pluto coming to do this again in January you can follow this, in 1982 or so, it was in Libra, and now it's happening in Capricorn, and those square each other, and they're almost at the same degree, if you follow that sort of thing. So it's almost like the Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn is like, do you really want to still believe this stuff that happened back in 82? Whatever you, and again, if you're really small at that time, what unconsciously do you believe? Especially about relationships, because Libra is the sign of relationship. So when Saturn's coming, I mean, Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, I'm going to square that. It's like taking command of your own belief systems about interactions with others. And with Libra, relationships doesn't have to just mean romantic. It can be one-on-one -on -one things, like how I relate to my mother, or how I relate to my friend or my boss. It can be Libra as well. So ways that you may feel um, higher than or lower than somebody because Libra has the scales and does that and there's something about Capricorn that's either the top of the heap or the bottom of the heap and the rubble at the bottom of the heap and so the Saturn Pluto square is really going to help create more a sense of um, self-esteem and being able to look people in the eye setting boundaries healthy boundaries changing your beliefs about what you deserve when you interact with people also some things about finances as well because Venus um, is rules, Venus is money, ruling Libra, and of course Capricorn has a lot to do with personal wealth and things like that, and issues of wealth versus poverty consciousness, you know, so you could be breaking belief systems like that as well. Why I'm bringing this up is because since so many people are reading about this stuff, like, oh no, January, you know, well with Jupiter moving into Capricorn, Jupiter moves really quick moves really fast, and is going to get to that point. So Saturn and Pluto are going to do this thing in January, but Pluto, I mean, excuse me, Jupiter is going to get to that same point in March and kind of through off and on throughout 2020, but March it'll get there. So Jupiter's on its way to bring this aha stuff about what happens, you know? So Jupiter sometimes can inflate a problem so you look at it and say wow this really came to a head because I want to create a new belief system around it. Um, it it almost gets exaggerated kind of like in comedy it's one of the techniques of exaggerating something to you know blow it out of proportion to say you know, what is that and it's funny but sometimes this might not be as funny 
but it'll be like, oh, right, this subtle thing now gets like, wow, this is how this impacts me. But Jupiter can also, doesn't have to be bringing something to that inflatedness, but it can be like, this is my new path. Because Saturn and Pluto say, don't do this anymore. Whatever this stuff you've been doing since 82, or if you're born in the 90s, whatever, there's still some sort of um, way that you're able to let go of things that limit you. And then, but sometimes with Saturn and Pluto, it's like, what do I do now? It's like I eliminate it. There's this big space and Jupiter fills the space or gives the direction, you know? So just want to put that out. We'll talk more about that in January when it happens, but and some of this might be repeat next month, but it's worth it. Um, so anyways, don't freak out about that stuff. And instead, maybe thinking about as Jupiter goes into Capricorn, what kind of goals you want to set for self-esteem, Capricorn, finances, budgeting, um, working out debt, um, setting healthy limits in partnerships um, or at work and just a lot of Capricorn is about boundaries and limits that help to make you stronger um, you know and, and create an identity in a healthy way you know um, so just thinking about those things and thinking about patterns just kind of getting these ideas because over the next few months that's going to help as it unfolds, you know? So, um, all right, so there's that. Some other good news for people that like to follow this sort of thing is that even though Mercury went direct a little before Thanksgiving, um, it c passes the point at which it retrograded, and that's going to be on December 7th. So we're in, like, fresh Mercury energy, so that's always nice to feel extra kind of um, hopeful and, um, I don't know, some, if you had any Mercury retrograde stuff with, miscommunications or things usually work out completely by that time. So, um, but one of the things I think are, is really great about this um, December is Mars, which is in Scorpio, is going to make a sextile, a really good angle, to Saturn and Pluto. So Scorpio makes a good angle to Capricorn. Um, I put good angle because everything's Everything's teaching us something. So, but it's an easy flow of energy. So Mars is a sense of personal power and feeling that you can make changes in your life. Because again, that Saturn and Pluto, they're getting kind of close, you know? It's like, where do I feel like don't have choice? And the Mars is like, wait, I do. You know, and it's it's not like, brr, like when Mars is squaring, like, I am do it. Mars sextile is like, yeah, I can do it this way. I'm trying out new techniques. Um, and because Mars is in Scorpio, there's a sense, Scorpio is like deep personal power, like kundalini force, or a sense of um, like, a, like a generator, like when, you know, your power goes out in your house and a generator, a backup generator, it gives you the energy when you feel there's none left. So Pluto, I mean, um, Pluto rules Scorpio, but Mars and Scorpio was like, I can do it. I can make it through things. I do have resources. Wow, and I'm applying them and it's working. So um, the other thing is finances. Um, if you have any issues with debt, um, I mentioned that with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, uh, because Scorpio represents either debt or great wealth, kind of in a similar way to Capricorn, if you have any issues financially, this could be a great time to make a plan or consolidate debt or, or even selling old stuff could be great. You can make a lot of money doing that, <laughs> like if you're putting Facebook yard sale or something, because you could realize you have kind of a gold mine in your own home and can generate income from there or feel like you release clutter. It's a great time to do anything like that. And also emotionally for the year, you know, to feel like, what do I want to let go of? A lot of people have told me, I can't wait for 2019 to be over for whatever reason. But, um, you know, releasing resentments, um, releasing disappointments of things you couldn't make happen can be a thing to work on this month. Um, those, those angles happen between like the 18th and the 22nd specifically, but you can kind of use that energy for the whole month. Um, the other thing is that I mentioned Jupiter, of course, being in uh, Capricorn, but Jupiter is going to... Um, trine, a good flow of energy, to Uranus this first week of December. And Jupiter is definitely about freedom, freedom of thought, and, and so is Uranus in a way. So they both kind of are about freeing yourself and opening your mind. So um, having Jupiter work with um, Uranus this year, and it can be about finances too, because Jupiter is about abundance, just general like gifts of money and stuff. 
Um, but it's also about like, again, this idea of like, what else I can do with my life, like a big dream, you know, this is how I really want to be, or this is my goal, you know, either my emotions acting this way or doing a new career, whatever. Um, it's like the big picture, you know, and this happens, like I said, this first week of December. And then when we go later in the month with the Mars, Mars is the little specific things I can do, you know, and I'm seeing I'm making progress because, you know, Jupiter and Uranus are like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my, you know, visualization. And Mars is like, all right, how do we do it? You know, let's roll up our sleeves and, and do it. I'm like, wow, I'm doing it. I'm making progress. So um, it's not just like sometimes when Jupiter and Uranus do stuff together, it's like, yeah, and nothing happens. So it helps to have that, especially the Saturn and Mars working well together because they're the they're the little worker bees, you know, as opposed to the thinkers, you know, like Jupiter and Uranus. But we need the big picture first, right? The big design in the heavens that we can then make happen, you know? So that's really lovely. Um, one of the tricky things is um, that... <laughs> this is going into the holidays, that um, Mercury, the communication planet, even though it's direct, and this is only for a few days, but it squares Neptune. Mercury's in Sagittarius, and it's kind of like, whatever, you know? And Neptune is sort of spacey, is spacey. So when Mercury, the thinking planet that goes, whatever, when it's in Sag, squares Neptune, which is in its own sign of Pisces, like double, huh? It can be like a mini Mercury retrograde for a minute, or it can be if you're, and this is going to be like the 22nd or so. So plans for if you celebrate Christmas, you're having any holiday stuff, whatever, Hanukkah, whatever. Um, it can just be weird. I mean, you can have like people that showing up late and they forgot the time or whatever it is. And you'd be like, is Mercury retrograde? But it's, you know, and, and maybe if you have people that tend to be forgetful or something, like who are bringing, you're having a potluck and they're bringing the main part of the meal. It's like, Maybe tell them to come an hour early so they come on time or making sure if the right people assigned to the job, if people are kind of forgetful, they'll be super flaky right then. Um, also, if there's anything about buying gifts for people, like making sure you're aware of like, what did you buy so-and-so? You know, double buy something and just annoying stuff like that. But mostly just being patient for people who are flaky it could be extra flaky. Um, but it's also a good time for prayers, for forgiveness. There's something very... Um, you know, like you are flaky, you're forgetting, you know, to bring the dinner, you can also forget issues you have with people. So it can be the sense of letting something float away. Like, why well, was I angry at them? Oh, it's off my mind. It's forgiven, you know? So that's also a great thing to proceed into um, the new year, you know? And, and bringing that idea, again, on New Year's Eve itself, the moon is going to be in Pisces. So then, Mercury will have moved on, but the moon will be with Neptune on New Year's Eve. And a lot of people like to do like a, a white stone ceremony that Unity Church does or, you know, some sort of forgiveness ritual or writing things out and burning them, of letting it go and then having a new list of dreams you want to manifest the next year. Um, but, but, you know, moon in Pisces is like being able to let go, like I said, like that theme with Neptune and also dream the big dream about um, putting that out into the ethers about this is what I want, you know? So, but it's also just such a good time for letting go of resentments and disappointments or how you're mad at yourself or any of that stuff. So have a great December and happy holidays to people. And um, again, if you want a session with me, I'm also, I'm also selling gift certificates. So if you want to contact me for that, um, for readings, obviously. But um, so if you want a reading or a session, you can contact me through alunamichaels.com. Um, my phone number is 248-583-1663 for texting. Um, and, oh, and then my book is on Amazon, The 12 Spiritual Gifts, or the, the Spiritual Gifts of the 12 Astrological Signs. That's what it's called. It's also on my website, too. So bye-bye um, for now, and just enjoy your December.